Hello. In this video, I am going to explain linear interpolation. You should thus, by the end of the video, be able to use this method. In other words, by the end of this video, students should be able to linearly interpolate a function between two data points. Let's start our exploration of this topic by introducing a problem that we can solve using linear interpolation. We will suppose that we've been given the information in the following table about the function f of x. In other words, we have been told that when x is equal to 0.2, f of x is equal to 0.5793, and that when x is equal to 0.21, f of x equals 0.5832. We have been asked, however, what f of x is equal to when x equals 0.205. We cannot read this number from the table, as the x at which we are evaluating f is neither 0.2 or 0.21. We must, therefore, do something else to determine f of 0.205. In this case, what we're going to do is linear interpolation. To understand what we do when we linearly interpolate a function, it is useful to represent the data in a different way. Instead of presenting the data in a table, we will plot it in the Cartesian plane shown here. Values of x will be displayed on the x-axis and values of f of x will be displayed on the y-axis. Let's put the value of 0.2 from the table on the x-axis of our graph here. We then note that when x is equal to 0.2, f of x is equal to 0.5793. The function must, therefore, pass through the point at which the horizontal and vertical dashed lines shown here meet. Turning to the other set of values in our table, we can place the value of 0.21 here on the x-axis. The table then tells us that f of x is equal to 0.5832 when x is equal to 0.21 and the function must therefore also pass through the point at which these two new horizontal and vertical dashed lines meet. We thus have two points in the Cartesian plane which we know the function must pass through. We are not given any further information in the table, however, so the curve that illustrates the function in the plane can take any shape as it passes between these two points. In fact, we do not even know, based on the information in the table, whether the function is continuous. Pause the video now, copy this figure, and sketch three different curves that could connect these two points. Welcome back. I hope you sketch some exotic curves. When we linearly interpolate a function, we are not nearly so creative. We instead assume that the two points are connected by a straight line, like the one shown here. As we know the equation of a straight line, and as we can parameterize this equation if we are given two points that the straight line passes through, we can thus determine a value for f of 0.205. Now that we understand the geometry of linear interpolation, let's introduce some mathematical symbols so that we can solve this problem algebraically. We can place these symbols in a table just like we placed the numbers on the previous slide. We are thus stating that the value of the function at x1 is f of x1 and that the value of the function at x2 is f of x2. The equivalent question to the one on the previous slide is to determine the value of the function at some point that is between x1 and x2. Notice that when we interpolate, we are always determining the value of the function at some position between the two points. If x is greater than both x1 and x2, or if x is less than both x1 and x2, then we are extrapolating the function and not interpolating. 
Let's transfer the information on our function from the table to the graph as we did in the previous slide. The value of x1 is going to be here on the x-axis and we can thus draw our dashed and horizontal vertical lines just as we did previously. From the information in the table we thus know that the function must pass through the point where these two lines meet. Furthermore, as we did on the previous slide, we can do exactly the same thing for x2, as shown here. We now draw our straight line to connect these two points. And we note that we want the value of the function at x here, which we would read off our straight line as shown here. The algebraic expression that we will use to calculate the approximate value of the function at this point is shown here. Now you can perhaps already see where this function comes from. Let's break it down, however, and look at where the various, what the various terms within it correspond to on the graph. The first f of x1 is this point on the y-axis here. The denominator on this quotient is then the distance between the two points at which we know the function on the x-axis. The numerator of the quotient is similarly the distance between the two y values we know about for the function. The quotient shown here is thus the gradient of this straight line. The term the gradient is multiplied by corresponds to this distance shown here. In other words, this complicated looking expression is nothing more than y equals mx plus c, the equation for a straight line. Having established where this equation comes from, let's now use it to solve the original problem that we were given. We were given the values of the function at x equals 0.2 and x equals 0.21, and we were asked to calculate the function at x equals 0.205. We are going to do this using linear interpolation, so we are going to use the expression that we just arrived at on the previous slide. Let's thus start inserting the terms into this expression. If we say that x1 is 0.2, then we can insert f of x in, is 0.5793 in here. If x1 is 0.2, then x2 must be 0.21. We thus insert f of x equals 0.5832 here, and f of x equals 0.5793 in here again. The denominator is similarly straightforward. x2 is equal to 0.21, and x1 is equal to 0.20, as shown here. The value of x is not in the table. This is the value of x at which we want to know the value of the function. In other words, this is the 0.205. We then have a final x1 equals 0.2 to insert, and we are done. We can thus plug all this into our calculator and find that f of x is approximately 0.58125. And that is pretty much all you need to know about linear interpolation. We can thus finish by noting that the learning outcome for this video once more, which was that by the end of the video, students should be able to linearly interpolate a function between two points. The key equation for linear interpolation is the one shown at the bottom of this slide. Really, though, there is nothing more to this than the equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c. Thank you for your attention.